So it let us know that something was going on back there? Yeah, that's the rear cross traffic alert. Nice. I was shooting it. <laughs> Who is that? I don't know. She wants to look at the car, but we have four others, so she's fine. Oh, okay, okay, okay. She wants to buy it. I don't blame her. This is a sweet car. Uh-oh. Oh, you oh good. It's, you're good. It's, it's, Sometimes it sees the traffic on Market Street and thinks that... It's like, hey, there's coming somebody yeah. coming in at 70 miles an hour. You better oh, watch out. Oh, that turned on automatically. Oh, I turned it. I think I turned it on. Well, it turned off, and then once you went into drive, it's in pulling away, it, it did it again. Oh, cool. Okay. I like it. I was playing around with it in the parking lot. I got a whole bunch of... I went back there and peeled off a bunch of crap off of cars. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> so hopefully that video will be pretty cool. I'm gonna... I'm gonna I don't know... I'm gonna start a new... Start a new, uh... Channel? No, no, no. Not, start, I, I'm trying to start a new thing with the whole peeling thing with cars. Yeah. Because uh, people are into the whole peeling thing with their electronics. Yeah. You know? So um, unboxing. Yeah. I always like I can't stand like the whole first third of unboxing videos when they are literally on. I say nobody. I don't. Care. I guess some people do. But I like learn like seeing the technology and what it's doing. It's like yeah, it's like get it out real yeah. fast and then start. I don't care at about it. how it comes in the box. Yeah. Unless it's gonna fall out or something, or like you, something yeah. will warn you. I, I usually do unboxings real like a time lapse. Yeah. And then and then it gets so that way they can kind of get an idea. They don't. I mean, it'll, just a glance, just twenty seconds basically yeah. of the whole unboxing is is enough for me anyway to visually yeah see what's going on. Yes, that stays on. That's cool. I guess it's probably more for the passenger in this standpoint. I wonder if you can change the view. See how it has the wide cone? Yeah, I was, I was play playing with around with it, and I couldn't, I didn't see any. So now it's not even turning off? Oh, there you go. Yeah, I turned it on. And Is there a settings menu? To, I know there's a settings menu, but can you change that in the settings? Oh, is that that's just information? Press view switch with basic screen display. Automatic light sensor. I haven't even flipped through this yet. Have you tried the reverse automatic braking? You put like yep. somebody back there. Yeah, I let I let Brandon back into me. And it stopped? Yeah. It'll even do it like you're backing up, not just directly, but about a foot offset from the back side of it, so you don't like end up scratching your... So like a shopping cart or something back there? Yeah, yeah. so don't even idea. have to be directly behind. I think this is just information. This isn't like an actual settings menu. Hmm. That's pretty good, though. It shows you the spread there. Yeah. Because it, it explains the offset part that you were talking about. See how it's, it's, yeah, kind it's of wider. A, like a cone? I'm going to go down uh, Martin Luther King and just cool. guide me the, uh, your normal test drive route because I yeah. forget what it is. So this is a turbocharged beast. Is it like going to fly? Um, really it, do, it does. It impressed me when I first got into it. It was it was more than I expected. It can get up and go. Maybe we'll come up to a red light without someone in front of you and you can it, hit it a little bit. Is it faster than a BRZ? Yeah, probably so. Really? The BRZs are not, they're lightweight, but they only got a two liter four cylinder regular. And it's like. What if you were to put the turbocharger in the BRZ? What that if, would be pretty, that's what a lot of people would want. Go right here. With a manual transmission? Yeah. I mean, that's that would be, what, pretty, that'd awesome. be pretty sweet. I mean, it'd be They'll essentially the eventually. WRX engine. I don't know what this guy's doing. I'm excited. I got a guy seriously been coming back a few times, bringing his wife by this week to test drive this car because uh, the the first ascent video you did. Okay. Yeah, and that wasn't even a very good video. No. Nope. <laughs> we started watching it start to finish. Wow. And I was like, I know that's that's because it was like twenty something minutes long. 
Yeah. That's sorted that for you, but. I was just kind of playing around with it, and there was customers everywhere, and the guy that brought it there had all this stuff in it. Yeah. And I was like, what's up with that? He had like, a, he had like cigarettes and all this stuff in yeah. there, and I was like, okay. <laughs> somebody, somebody in Subaru is going to see that and be like, uh, yeah, no. Not a good idea. To, to, you know, put it out and showcase it to yeah. people like that. But we were able to get a chance to look at it anyway. Yeah. What's funny is that one guy took all the stuff out. The other guy just left everything in. Yeah. The higher end model too. Yeah. Also. These cool seats are nice. Oh yeah, these are comfortable. They sit well. They're wide. One thing I noticed with Subarus, the armrests are super soft. Yeah. The steering wheel is a little bit softer than the normal steering mm -hmm. wheel, and it's just I don't know. And the dashboard has that just like a rubbery yeah. soft. It's not like the plastic stuff that's annoying, but this yeah. is softer than the side. Well, I guess it's the same. Yeah, that's I feel similar. like it's a little bit different. What do you it's think? It's different as far as the. This is more rubbery. This is more like a like a Nerf material. Yeah. But that's what I do as I get in cars. I start touching everything and feeling it. Yeah. And checking it out. Wow. Or get in the other lane so you can ex go to the right so that you can accelerate off the line. At I the don't green think light. I can. Oh, not anymore. No. Yeah. I, don't, I, I try to avoid oh, okay. like, pulling out in front of people like that. That's, that's I was being safe. <laughs> all right, use the auto vehicle hold. That's all right. We got a Sienna in front of us. You know, yeah. Gonna oh, they're going to get off. Yeah. So is the green auto vehicle hold light on? Yeah. Did you take your foot off the brake? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's cool. pretty cool. I don't have to I just sit here. And then when I push the accelerator, it it'll releases release it. it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I guess that's been around in some cars for a little bit, but I can't wait to see it at night. Check out the illumination. Oh there. yeah, a little bit. I didn't of... even notice that. I wonder if that's that's, that's probably just a touring thing. Yeah, I turned the headlights on and, and illuminated. Yeah. Heated steering wheel. That's nice. Well, that's a leg room. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I had to pull the seat round. up. I had to pull the seat up a little bit. Yeah. The back doors are bigger than the front doors. You notice that? No. Did you I measure them? up. No, I didn't measure them, but I just opened them up and looked at them. It's like the, the back doors are actually just wider and yeah. bigger. And, and Interesting. And I know that they intentionally designed it so that the back ones open up exceptionally yeah. wide. They open up more, Almost too. to like a 90 degree angle mm -hmm. um, so that it's easier to get like car seats and things like that in. Yeah, that was, um, that's good. Mm-hmm. This is I got I got to switch. Oh, yeah. to that. That's that's one of the best things you got to see. Yeah, that's so cool. Because and everybody is used to a regular mirror, but oh yeah, I wonder if it'll be like weird to adjust to. Like if you actually have to use it in a scenario where there's a bunch of either kids or, or luggage in the back. Yeah, because it's like normally on a mirror when you move left to right, like you the can perspective, look around. The perspective changes, but this is a static. Image. It has a good view. Yeah, it's not pretty wide. Did it fall down? Just a little bit. It's because I'm trying to keep up with that Sienna. Yeah. That's what it is. It's my secret. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it has a different view. It's more of a linear, non-wide view. So that way, when you're looking at it, the, the camera back there just looks like you're just looking out the yeah. back. Spherically adjusted. Yeah, I like that. I like that camera. This, if you stare at this thing for too long, you start to get a little sick because it's so <laughs> yeah, wide. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can see. I'm that. sure it'll be nice for like parking spots, but this is a lot more smooth to mm -hmm. look at. You got that right. So the menus here, this first one is just an eyesight menu, it tells you what's active um, on there for the emergency. If you had the adaptive cruise control turned on, it tells you your automatic headlights are on, those kind of things. I'm going to turn it on. Yeah. So that changed it there. So you're, it's turned on and then you'll set it at the next one. Um, 
Then on the left, it's showing you the traction of the wheels, and they're green while you're driving, but it'll turn red if, one, if a wheel slips. And then you have the angle of the road that you're on on the right side. That eyesight menu again. Uh, this is how hard you're accelerating your real-time fuel economy. See that jumps to 84, 74. So that's pretty neat. Middle one's your real-time fuel economy and your average speed for the current trip. One miles an hour. That's mile because an there's hour. nine miles on this trip. Yeah, we need to that's do a little bit more driving. traveling weather on there. The vehicle itself has speed 10 miles navig- total. Yeah. So that's a neat Oh, it view. shows the speed limit. Speed limit that's and navigation limit. information. Oh, it's up here, too. Yep. So that way I can... Um, now playing more Cops fuel don't know if this has a speed limit on there, do they? So that way I... Uh, I didn't know what the well, they could peek was. in. They could peek inside and be like, "Well, look at your dash." <laughs> You're like, they're just looking there, like, "Well, look at your speed," and take a picture of that. Yeah. They don't even need a radar gun. <laughs> and it looks like a sign too. That's yeah. pretty cool. I turn right up here somewhere. Yeah, at the airport exit, you can turn around and it'll come right back. I like the way the blind spot detection light is where it is. Yeah. Instead of being on the side mirror itself. Yeah. They, they changed that on the 2018s for the Outbacks, Crosstrex, Legacies. Um, it's funny, we it's just passed that sign that says 50 miles an hour. As soon as we passed it, it went down to 50. Wow. That's pretty accurate. So they changed it. They're changing it on basically all of them now. Yeah. So the Forcer's getting the, the generation, called the Generation 3 update uh, for 2019 have it so it's the only one that does it well the the I'm trying to remember about the WRX 2018 WRX still had it in the mirror did you ever see that old 80s movie uh, Maximum Overdrive no I did well that bridge that when you go over down there go on 74 that's yeah. the bridge that was in that movie no way yeah and every, and, um, every time I, like I, I remember watching that movie like a thousand times when I was a kid and uh, every time I go over that bridge I'm like man I can't believe that's the it, <laughs> it looks just like it yeah um, you know how the you watch a movie and it'll have something in there and then when you see it in real life you're like this doesn't look like the movie. oh yeah but that just looks exactly like you know it's like uh, it takes funny. you back we're going we're going on a family vacation to Lake Blair in August and that's where Dirty Dancing was filmed. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So we'll go left up here. I notice it has kind of simulated gears. It doesn't shift like a normal CVT. Yeah. So it's smooth. It's kind of funny. I, I drive a cross track, um, and I'm used to the CVT. And my wife drives a Chevy Equinox. Go left here. Um, and like I t- sometimes I'm like wait it's her transmission cam like it, I guess it's just the regular transmission I'm just used to the smooth CVT because hmm. it feels like rough or aggressive like shifting sometimes it's like, mm, mm. But, yeah it's like Roxy's yeah and if you floor it in a CVT you'll still get it you'll feel it a little bit more but on the regular transitions and normal acceleration speeds it's seamless just about. I notice this one doesn't have a sport mode. Nope. That's one thing. Other than the um, Forester XT and the CVT WRXs, they have different drive modes, but all the other ones are um, just one drive mode. Hmm. Which I guess, I mean, really, this particular vehicle is not really a... uh, It's not supposed to be performance-oriented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's capable. It feels... And it feels like it just kind of like use the accelerator for the uh, the CV the, uh, yeah. the sport mode. Like if you start giving it a lot of gas, you do. It. Well, and essentially, I think that's kind of how they most of them work. You can um, you like if if you're in like say a Hyundai, or whatever different sport modes. It's just a matter of limiting the throttle response. If I'm if I think I'm pretty sure. And so, like, in an economic mode, it's just going to limit it. And then on a performance or sport mode, you hit it, it's just more responsive. So you might as the same thing as just flooring it. Yeah, 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 pretty much. My car, I don't know, it seems like it's, it's too low RPMs when you're in regular mode. If you're in a hurry. If you're just, like, normal driving, it doesn't. Yeah. But if you're all frustrated and you're trying to get somewhere... 
then if you put it in sport mode, it seems like it's hanging too much with the RPMs, and then it's too low when you're in the regular mode. So oh yeah, it's not like I noticed that I drove the CVT WRX and it, it hangs a little bit. I guess that's I think that's supposed to be better if you're like really getting after it. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, it keeps you in that power the power band. Power band. Yeah. yeah. Because it basically a engine has a optimal RPM. Yeah. And that's what the whole CVT takes takes advantage of. There's an the Outback. 2008 or so. Do I need to get in left lane or? Um, in a little, bit. not this light, not the next one, but the one after that one. So we'll turn it back left again. off, didn't you? I saw it flashing. Oh, there it goes. I like the little yeah, space that, here. You can probably... Yeah, it's, it's got one over here, there. too. Yeah. And I was like, man, that's convenient, because when you get in, like, when you get in the car, first of all, you're standing up, and you can't reach in to put something down. Let's say you got stuff in your hands... You can just yeah, go ahead and pretty, pop some stuff deep. there. Yeah. And um, you can free up your hands while you're getting in the car. Mm -hmm. Especially like if you're on the phone and you're like well, trying to operate one handed, you throw something, a key or whatever in yeah. there. And then when you get out, it's right there, so it reminds mm -hmm. you to get it. Sort of like, um, I don't know, get, put, putting something in your way when you're. Yeah. So to remind yourself. And these are pretty good. These are like hands, yeah. like pockets too. Vehicle hey, head has moved. It told me that the, it gave me a warning, so I'm not sitting at the light looking like an idiot. Yeah. That's so they awesome. figure it's rather better for your car to beep at you than the person behind you to lay on their horn. That's a good idea. It's road rage. Yeah. You start getting mad. So that blind spot, if, if there's a car in your blind spot, it's just going to be a solid light. Mm -hmm. But if your blinker's on and somebody's in your blind spot, that light flashes at you. It doesn't beep, though. It doesn't beep. Have you tried out the Subaru Lane Keep Assist? So oh. you, see, you have it turned on, and you just turned it off. So it's when you on. see the two vertical white lines, mm -hmm. that tells you it sees the lanes in the road. Yeah, it's got kind of steering me. And so it's, it's not like the one that keeps you in the center. It's, it it's like more of like, keeps you from swerving off. Okay. It so like, you still might look drunk if you rely upon it too much. It just got like goes to that line, and it moves you That's, back, and then it goes to that line. Yeah. Is there a minimum speed that the, the blind, top, blind uh, spot detection works? There is. I'm not sure what it is because I've noticed that like right now, obviously, these cars are passing us and there's, there, it's not lighting up. Um, I have to test that out specifically. So the light's green, so maybe we could be able to get past this yeah. traffic. So all this trim is um, has like a faux carbon fiber on the base and the premium trim level, and you got the nice soft touch leather here and the wood green inlay on the yeah, sides, that and that, great. that wood goes even to the back. It's similar to the Outback, except for on the Outback, that trim there's a piece that goes across the middle here that it's also there. So you're going what 19 now, and that was turning yeah, on. So it must be like 15 or something. Really, yeah. a really low limit. So put in an address if you want to put in an address. I didn't go over that. Oh, yeah. So, um, so they updated it from the infotainment stuff from the 2017s. Huge. This is the Gen 3 head unit. It's actually 3.1. Um, but you always just start with the menu and do search. And then you can use it kind of like you would your phone. You can see it says example pizza or 123 Main Street. Um, so if you know the name of the address, you can type that in. Or if you're just looking for a specific business, um, you can type... 
that. Let's see. It might, you might have to be more general. Like, I know you can do Costco, and I know you can do, like, let's just see what it comes up with. Parkway Subaru. Okay. I don't know why it does Parkway California first, but <laughs> it's there. I don't know. Hey, look at there. We're right around the corner. Let's go there. And it's showing our weather automatically. Yep. And then we have some guidance up there. That's nice. Mm -hmm. And then I believe, well, on the outbacks, when you're coming up to a turn, it would it would show up on that center display, on the, the five and a half inch display up there. But I'm wondering if because this has it here that it doesn't show up there anymore. That's actually, to me, that's a little bit more convenient. Than looking down between yeah. there. That's, that's Left like, turn ahead. U.S. 17 bus north towards Jacksonville, yeah. then, after half a mile, turn right. 17 bus north. Yeah. Bus. Um, <laughs> have you noticed the heads-up display at all with the eyesight? After half a mile, no. turn left. So, there is, it's it's not like a, it ha only has three sets of lights, a, a, red, a green, an orange, and a red. Does and this I one guess, have heads-up Yeah, display? it does. And so, you can, you can see the reflection in the mirror where it is. And I think it's, I'm trying to remember where it's specifically used. When you start up the car, you can see it flash up there. Hmm. Um, Where's the settings for it? So I think it's all, it's very when simple. When we get parked, we'll look at it. Because I did. I, I was actually looking for the heads up display and I didn't see it. I figured that was not. Let's see if it's in here. I think it's Turn just. Turn left, for, U.S. Oh, 17 bus north to towards Jacksonville. Then, after half a mile, turn right. Because if it has it, I totally skipped it in the video. So it's just three sets of lights. It's just a red light, green light, and yellow light. Um, all in a line next to each other. Okay, so it doesn't have like the speedometer and all that? No, that, no. I don't know why. It's like, I feel like it's not that advanced of technology. It's just a rough projector. And a... I think it, I know it turns on, it has, it's, it's correlated with the eyesight somehow. I think it might just be, maybe it's just for the emergency braking aspect of it. I feel like mm -hmm. coming up on something, it starts off green and then, or maybe it'll do it with the cruise control as well. Um, but if you look up next to that, the corner of that speaker, you can see where it kind of cuts in. Yeah, I noticed so on the other but side it's on too. This side too. So that's a vent. That's a vent. Turn off the car and turn it back on, and you'll see it light up. I don't know where it comes out of. Open the door and shut it so the screen turns off. I started up. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know why I had my sunglasses. Oh, are they polarized? Yeah, they're polarized, so I didn't see it. So it popped up just briefly. So it's to the right of that a little bit. Yeah, it's like right in... I don't know where it projects, but I, it's like right in yeah. this area, it seems like. Okay, so explain what that does, so that way it's part of the, the whole process. Um, I haven't dug into it deeply. I, I think it's correlated, like I said, with the eyesight. Um, I know in emergency situations where if you're coming up on something, you're, where you're you have your, to your, cruise, you. your cruise set, it's, I think it's going to be green. But if you're coming in hot on somebody, it's going to go yellow and then red and obviously beep out loud and then hit the brakes. Um, so that's part of this. Yep. I so you have to press and hold that to disable it. It's not flat. It didn't fly. I was thinking maybe it might flash, but anyways. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll put a link. We'll find out. Yeah. And then we'll put a link in the description so that mm -hmm. way people can find out more. Okay. All right. Cool. Go ahead and turn this off.